my favorite cardiovascular workouts. We're going to talk about how much cardio should you do, how hard should your cardio workouts be, and then how frequently should you do them. You know, it's so important to have a good, strong, healthy cardiovascular system. I not, and also, I know I changed the time this morning. I know we're doing this kind of early, 9.30 Sunday morning. Normally, I do it around 11, 12 o'clock. But I'm actually driving my daughter back to school today, so we got a long ride. We got about a five, six hour ride in the car, so I really wanted to get a nice nice early start you know, to this live stream. So if, uh, once again, too, if you have any questions, definitely ask all your questions. Now let me pull up the, um, let me pull up the comment section. It's when I, I'm a little low on my coffee this morning. I only had one cup of coffee, then I'm going to have my little bit of um, espresso. Ever since I went to Italy, I've been hooked on these espressos, and I absolutely love them. Okay, so let's see what we got here. Let's go over the first slide. This is generally what, what I'm going to talk about today, just a little review. How much cardio should you do? Let me lower the phone. I'm just getting a little feedback from the phone. How long, how hard, how often? should you do your cardio for good health. So we're gonna focus more on good health. And if you notice, I made, I made a little bit of a note on the bottom of this slide, or why you should not control your weight with just cardio. You know, that's a big mistake that I've made for years and I think a lot of people do. When it comes to cardiovascular training, look at it like you're doing it for good health. You want a strong, healthy cardiovascular system. Yes, you're burning some calories and you're burning some body fat, but the main goal of, of these cardio workouts are just to get you in incredible shape, get you feeling good, increase your longevity. Like I always say, when you're walking is like meditating when you're moving. So I'd like you to take that approach when you're doing your cardio and when you're doing your exercise in general. Never look at like the amount of calories you're burning when you're working out. You wanna control your weight by eating like an optimal diet, by controlling calories, by eating enough protein, all the stuff I constantly talk about. And then when it comes to working out, whether it's resistance training, whether it's this cardio training that we're going to talk about today, or just flexibility movement, you you want to do that to to create the response you want. Don't look at it like you're controlling weight. Okay. Then we'll go over number two, my two favorite type of cardio workouts. We're going to break them down in like great detail. And then I also want to talk about VO2 max, exactly what VO2 max is, which stands for your maximum oxygen consumption and why that's so important. There's so much research coming out consistently saying that people who are very cardiovascular fit live longer. Like your chance of getting a stroke, diabetes, cancer, all these all these horrible things are dramatically reduced literally by being in really good cardiovascular shape. Hey, good morning, Harriet. Thank you for showing up. I really appreciate it. I know it's a little bit early today. I'm curious to see how many people are going to show up today since I, I'm doing this at um, 9.30 in the morning instead of later. Plus, I only like um, posted this like late last night. I wasn't sure if I was going to do it because I have to take this long car ride today, but I don't want to miss anymore. I want to do this like every Sunday. And I'm even thinking about maybe switching these live streams to maybe late Friday afternoon, early Friday evening. So I want to get everyone's feedback on that. Okay, so let's, let's jump right into it. And once again, any questions, ask your questions. Let's see what we got. Okay. okay, so my two favorite types of cardiovascular training, like aerobic type workouts, is the short heart cardio. You know, some people will call it HIT for HIT. I put HIIT for high intensity interval training. So I want to talk about like how I would like it to do interval training, which is incredibly good for increasing that VO2 max. And we're going to break these down in detail. And I think you, most people can get away with doing that twice a week, even once a week can produce great results. I personally do it twice, but I think even once a week is a great thing. Like for example, maybe you'd want to do a workout like that once a week, and if you're playing tennis or doing something where you're getting those spikes in heart rate, that can really count as an aerobic workout, as a hit aerobic workout. My other favorite type of aerobic workout is that long, easy cardio. That's like walking. I'm gonna break it down in much greater detail exactly where I'd like your heart rate to be. And I think you can do that five days a week if not every single day. And I also wanted to put a third category here, which is active lifestyle. Like just being, moving around, like gardening, vacuuming the house, right? Parking your car far away when you walk to the supermarket or to the mall or something. That all counts. And I even, I didn't put it in this particular slide. But I even want to talk about zone two training, which really doesn't fit 
it, it kind of like fits in between short hard cardio and long easy cardio zone two, which is getting really popular now. I think someone asked a question last Sunday when I was doing the live stream on zone two, which is not, I'm not as much of a fan of zone two as opposed to short hard, short hard and long easy. But I'm, I'll break it all down here and you'll know exactly what I mean as I go through. Okay, let's first talk about the short hard cardio workouts. I know there's a lot going on in this slide. Oh, thanks. My, my dearly beloved, my wife has just brought me another cup of espresso, which I really appreciate. You know, these cups of espresso are kind of small. No, that's great. Let me let me hit this up a little bit. I would love to put my wife on camera, but she's not a fan of being on film. But maybe one day I could talk her into doing one of these live streams with me. I want my daughter to do it because I have a hard time sometimes reading all the questions. Um, so it'd be really, it would be really, really fun to have an assistant. Hey, so Harriet and John are both watching this morning, which is really incredible, wonderful. Thanks a lot. I appreciate, I appreciate you showing up. Okay, so let's talk about this short, hard cardio. And if you want me to blow these things up, I really can make them like I can make them a lot bigger. If that if it helps you to see it, let's go back to this view. Okay, so what is a short, hard core? Um, a short, hard hit workout. It's pretty much a workout that's going to increase your VO2 max, your maximal oxygen consumption. And that's what VO2 max stands for. It's a measure of your maximum amount of oxygen you can consume when you're working out. Let's see, I think James is here. Hey, James, thanks for showing up. Good morning, Mike. Early here in California. Well, you're brave. I'm so glad. You know, it's interesting because I normally, um, you know, text. I have a lot of friends in California. I normally text them and say I'm going live, you know, but I didn't want to text them at this time in the morning. But I appreciate you waking up early. So James says, I like to walk, but every once in a while, I walk as fast as I can for a minute. Is that like hit? Yes, it's like hit. It really depends on how, how high your heart rate goes. And we're going to talk about that right now. So I'll, I'll explain it all to you. You may be a little bit below like 90% of your max heart rate, which is kind of more like a hit type workout, but we'll, we'll break it all down. But what I mean by VO2 max is like the maximum oxygen consumption. I always like to explain it like this. The fitter you get, the more oxygen <laughs> your body could consume. And actually, the, the, like the harder you can work out to some degree. But even someone who's very unfit can be working out really hard, but they may not have a very high VO2 max. And it's everyone has their like genet genetic limit. So for example, some people may say, okay, the athletes who are going to win all these endurance races are going to have the highest VO2 max. N you know, not necessarily. Y everyone has their gen genetic potential. Like someone can have a lower V2 max, VO2 max, even though it's very high, and can beat someone in a running race that someone has higher. So it's not it's not that simple. But if you look at it like if you look at it like cars, I would I would always explain it like this. It, let let's say you're looking at an economy car like like a Honda Civic, you know, just a small engine, a small four cylinder. Then you look at like a Ferrari, like an eight twelve cylinder type engine, and let's say you would floor the Honda Civic and you would floor the Ferrari. Like what car do you think would burn more gas, right? You know, what car could consume more energy? You know, like the Ferrari because it has a big engine. So look at it like that. When you increase your VIA to max, your ability to consume energy, like to consume oxygen, to burn burn calories, burn carbohydrates, it's increased. So you're more like aerobically fit. And it's not, it's not just like your heart gets bigger. Your heart gets a little bit bigger, but you get more like mitochondria density. Mitochondria is, is like, some people will call it like the powerhouse of the cell. That's what makes ATP, anison triphosphate, which helps produce energy. So your mitochondria density gets increased. Like there's more capillaries in your lungs. Like all the systems that deliver oxygen throughout your body gets enhanced when your VO2 max comes up. Oh, hey, Patel is here. Thanks, Patel. Hey, Mike. See, I, I, know, I know in the UK, this is a great time for you. So it's 2.45 now in London, UK. Making my Sunday roast of baked salmon and vegetables. Oh, that sounds great. Wonderful. As I have been doing for 24-hour fast. Oh, you're doing 24-hour fast? Thing. That sounds great. Really cool. That's good. I know this is maybe a little bit off topic, but I talked about like in 2023, I want to start broadening these live streams and also the content on the YouTube channel. So besides just talking about like the optimal diet and intermittent fasting and time restricted eating and all that, I'm gonna to try to talk a, talk a little bit about 
you know, fitness and working out. And we'll see how it goes. If no one likes it, maybe I'll go back to doing mostly just, um, you know, nutrition, diet, you know, fat loss recommendations. We'll see how it goes. Okay, so that's the basic, say, definition of Via2 Max. It's you're basically making your body be able to consume oxygen better, which makes you more aerobically fit. Okay, and let's break down what I consider to be like a perfect hit type bomb workout. Let me slide the camera over so I can kind of blow this um, blow this slide up a little bit more so you can really, really see it. Okay, and once again, H-I-I-T stands for High Intensity Interval Training. Okay, so pretty much you can pick any aerobic exercise that you like. I recommend going more with more of like a low impact type movement because if you're not used to doing these high intensity intervals, it could be like rough in the body. A lot of people like to say, oh, sprint, you know, such a natural thing to like sprint. But I find if you're not used to running and you're not a runner, I wouldn't sprint. I would do something like if you have an, if you have an exercise bike, or even inside or outside. If you have like a treadmill, you can use like the incline. You can even walk, like James is saying, incline. So, so James, quickly, I would say for you, if you speed up for a minute, if you can speed up for a minute, on a hill where you can really get your heart rate up there, to me that would be an interval. But just to walk a little bit faster on like a flat path, I don't know if your heart rate will get high enough to really be considered an interval workout. But we're gonna break it down even more. See, I love the bike, the elliptical, the Stairmaster, things like that, because it's like a low impact, really safe way. Or those Airdyne bikes, you know, where you can really crank your heart rate up. Okay. And the general rule is that there's that formula, I should have probably put on the slide, um, 220 minus your age is roughly your maximum heart rate. So I'm 60 years old, 220 minus my age, which that puts me at uh, 160 beats per minute would be my max heart rate. So to do like a hard interval, I want to be somewhat close to my max heart rate. I like to say maybe 90%. So if I can get my heart up to say 150, 155 when I'm doing a hard interval, that's gonna create a great response. That's gonna inc increase my VO2 max. But you don't have to stay there for an extended period of time. In fact, that could be a real negative. I've talked about this many times in these live streams and on the YouTube channel, that there are athletes, like especially these endurance athletes and these professional athletes who push the too hard for too long, and it really does damage your heart. I've talked about this before, like Mark Spitz, the, um, Larry Bird, Billy Jean King, they all have AFib. You know, AFib is when your heart beats irregularly. It kind of like, it, it kind of messed up the heart. And there's definitely some good research out there saying that people who push too hard for too long, like for example, let's say they're staying at 90% of their max heart rate for like an hour, and you do that like five days a week for a decade or longer, it can really hurt your heart. So it's important when it comes to these interval workouts that you just wanna to touch it and then you wanna come back down to so the ideal formula. I like this workout a lot. So what you would do, let's say you're doing this on a stationary bike, right? The whole workout's gonna be 15, maybe 20 minutes long, let's say, but maybe 15 minutes of somewhat hard work. That's why I put 15 minutes there. But the whole workout, cause you wanna warm up and cool down, say it's 20 minutes, okay? So you get on the bike, you can warm up for about five minutes. If you want to save time, you can even warm up for only two, three minutes. I personally need about five minutes just to get my joints and my knees, since I'm a little bit older, kind of lubricated and, and used to the movement. You know, the synovial fluid within within your joints and the viscosity of the synovial fluid kind of changes and gets you ready for activity. Oh, uh, we got a couple more questions. Let's see, hey, Jane, James is here, thanks for showing up. No, Jeff, hey, Jeff, thanks for showing up. I'm barely awake, but I'm here, thanks. I know, I had to do it early today. You may have missed the beginning. I gotta drive my daughter back to back to college today. She's moving back in. Yeah, she was just in Europe, so you know, she, we got a long ride. We got it. This time of the year, my tennis is once a week for an hour on Sunday mornings, and I do home dumbbell work on Sunday, Tuesday, Thursday. I think that's great, James. So you're getting with that tennis. That's like a high intensity workout because you're sprinting, you know, to hit a ball. Your heart elevates, and then you get to recover. That's typical ideal hit high intensity interval type workout. So if you're doing that once a week, I would say instead of doing this hit workout twice a week, you can easily get away with just doing it once in addition to your tennis, which is ideal. That's why it's nice to look at your whole life and see what's going on. Like for example, even if 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 one day, you know, you, know, you just take a hike and you're walking up like a big hill and that spikes your heart rate, I mean, that all counts as interval type training. 
But this would be like a classic, typical interval workout. Warm up for two to five minutes. Then you wanna do 30 seconds, you know, pretty, pretty hard. And I like to say 90 to almost 100%. So in my case, since my max heart rate is about 160 beats, I would get on, say, the elliptical. I warm up and then I do 30 seconds pretty hard, almost all out, and my heart rate would go up to maybe 155, 160. But then I wanna give myself a 90 second recovery. See, part of why these interval workouts work so well is that not only do you wanna elevate your heart rate to create that response, you want your body to get used to being able to slow down your heart rate quickly. Some people feel how quickly your heart slows down. I don't know if you ever had a stress test with a you know, cardiovascular type doctor. Not only are they measuring how well your heart does when it's elevated, they also wanna see how quickly your heart goes and slows back down, which is another great indicator of how cardiovascular fit you are. That's why these interval workouts work so well. You're spiking your heart rate and then you're letting it recover. And you don't have to do too many of these intervals. And you can even mix it up a little bit. I like the 30 seconds hard, 90 seconds easy, but sometimes I'll do one minute hard, one minute easy, but you only wanna do five or six of them. You don't have to like do, cause the whole idea, first of all, there's two ways of looking at it. If you know you were gonna do like 20 of these, I'm sure you're gonna hold back, right? Cause you know, oh my God, I gotta do another 15, I gotta do another 10. But if you only know you're doing five or six, plus you only know it's 30 seconds long, you're gonna really go for it. That's why I'm not, I'm not too much of a fan of those like spinning type classes or these aerobic type classes where they just do 500 intervals. You know, they just like crank, they just crank it, you know, over and over and over again. You reach a, you reach a, a point of diminishing returns pretty quickly when it comes to this high, intex, high intensity exercise. It's different if you're training for a sport and you want to be an Olympian or you want to like, a, you know, win a race, then you may have to overtrain a little bit. But when it comes to, like I'm into efficiency, like maximizing the health and like benefits of exercise without overtraining and without overdoing it. So if you just did like six intervals, or say you did 20, you may not necessarily be more fit or raise your VO2 max any higher by doing 20. Yes, yes, you know, it may help you in a particular sport, but you wanna be efficient. Plus the harder you work out, the shorter it should be, and you don't wanna damage your heart in any way. So I think six, maybe seven intervals is all you need, 30 seconds. And then you always, always wanna cool down with like a three minute cool down. And I think this is the ideal, like high intensity interval type workout. And I would do it, you know, it, it, it could depend on your age a little bit. I like to do it twice a week, but even once a week, I think you definitely will get pretty good benefit. Let's see what James got. Okay, so James, I also walk and then drop and knock out 25 pushes four or five times in the workout. James, I love that, man, you're doing great. And that is, I mean, all these things, I know it can get a little confusing when it comes to like aerobic training and when it comes to anaerobic training, when you're doing something this hard. Like when you go, like okay, this, I know, I know I've talked about this before. Okay, there's different types of like muscle fibers and it, like the body's always making ATP, antigen triphosphate, the fuel muscle contraction. So when you're walking at a comfortable level, like you're pretty much fueling your body with hopefully mostly oxygen, maybe a little bit of fat, a little bit of, um, of carbohydrates, and you're using more of those those type one muscle fibers. And I like to describe them as like dark meat chicken. Think of it like that, like chicken thighs, things like that. Like they're oxidative, they're good at burning fat, they're fatigue resistant. But once you start working harder, let's say you're walking then you start jogging and maybe even sprinting, you switch over to a different type of muscle fiber, type 2A, type 2B, which are stronger than the type one, but they don't have the endurance, they fatigue quickly and they're really good at burning carbohydrates. So when you go from say a hard interval, you're switching over to the type two. So in a way, when James is jump, jumping on the floor and doing push-ups, he's switching over more to the type two. Plus his heart's somewhat elevated from doing the walk. So he is getting you know, somewhat of this like hit type training. That's why just even lifting weights when you go like somewhat quickly from movement to movement, you are getting some like hit some high intensity cardio type training, but it's not as pure <laughs> as just doing it like this. And it gets, it can get, I didn't want to get too much into the science 
because you know guys I, mean, I studied all this stuff in school I'm also certified by the American College of Sports Medicine as an exercise physiologist you know there's this anaerobic threshold which means that like you know the body's building up these metabolites and you know and like uh, and you get that little bit of a burn and you're right at the point where you're gonna go from you know from an aerobic state to really like an anaerobic state it can, it can get a little bit confusing but I didn't even want to I didn't even want people necessarily like taking their heart rate you can definitely train like that and it is incredibly effective I'm a little bit I wanted to keep it simple that's why I like more like rate of perceived exertion like when you're doing these intervals you want to pretty much go for it I mean just think about 90 percent effort and then we're going to talk about steady state what I mean by that as opposed to taking your heart rate and trying to do that but I love that James I love the idea of, of, of banging out like 25 push-ups um, four or five times within a walk. I mean, you're kind of getting your intervals there to some degree. Is, I, I totally agree. Let's see what Jeff's got. What do you recommend for a warm up and cool down? Okay, when it comes to the hit, I would do the exact movement or piece of equipment that you're using. Like, for example, if you're on the treadmill, I just would walk for five minutes. You know, get your heart rate up a little bit, you know, like 100 beats, like nothing crazy, then do your interval. Now you want to create like a warm up, just think warm up stands for increasing your body temperature like warming up right and cooling down is like the opposite you're cooling your body down but once you increase your body temperature your muscles automatically become like it's really your joints are even i think even more than your muscle like i'm saying that that, that viscosity of that synovial fluid changes it just gets your body ready to go for it and the older you get i find i need a little bit more of a warm-up like when i was younger all I would need was like a two minute warm up, then I can go right do an interval. Now that I'm older, I need like about five minutes to truly warm, warm up to get ready. So I would use the same movement. When it comes to a cool down, same thing. I just would use the same movement and just do it easier. You know, those metabolites will just dissipate. It could convert it back into carbohydrate, you know, it, it carbohydrates in the body like the lactate, the hydro will all go down. Now it's different, Jeff, though, if you're doing something like um, tennis which is more complex and more dynamic. You know, like tennis here is not one dimensional. Obviously you're running forward, you're running backward, you're twisting, you're turning. What For something like that, what I would do, I would probably just like warm up really easy for five minutes, hitting the ball around, like just volleying with wh whoever you're playing with, you know, hit some serves, I mean, just loosen up, maybe do a little dynamic movement type stretching, you know, but I, I do like the warm up and the cool down doing the same motion or, or, ec or or, or sport that you're going to be playing. Okay, P okay. This is Jeff again. Pretty sure I've collapsed before I got to twenty. You know, twenty-five pushes is is, is pretty impressive, and especially four or five times, James, within <laughs> that walk. I'm impressive. To, I'm impressed by it too. I generally like to stay around twenty, twenty-five reps when I do pushups, and I use a relatively slow rep cadence. And I actually, I've, I've got an issue with one of my wrists. You know you know me, guys. I'm so banged up from all the sports and all that stuff, crazy stuff I've done, my surfing, my motocross, all that stuff, that I like to use the push-up handles so I can keep my wrist straight. I can't go into extreme extension on the floor. I have this gangly assist like in my wrist. i got to get that removed one day. So it would be hard for me. But j just think, Jeff, you don't have to do what James is doing. I mean, I think if you want to do 25, just do it a slightly elevated. Especially if you're walking, you see a park bench, you hit the bench, right? Or you just do something elevated to make, make your body weight seem a little bit lighter, which is good. Okay, so that's the general high intensity workout. Twice a week, even once a week, I think will produce like great benefits, great benefits for you. Okay, let's go over, let's go over the, um, let me just slide this camera over a little bit more. I think everything's working pretty good today with the, um, with the setup too. I'm assuming sounds good, pictures good. Okay, let's go over the long, easy cardio. This is my favorite. And I've talked about this in the past. I've also got a little note here about Phil Maffetone, my favorite like long, easy base building PhD guy who's been talking about this stuff for like decades old, but pretty much way before anyone. Okay, this is my general formula for the long, easy cardio. And it's somewhat of a modified formula to the true Phil Maffetone. The true, the true Phil Maffetone, he's a PhD. Um, he likes to use a little bit, slightly more of an, of an aggressive formula. He likes to go 180 minus your age. So for example, if you're, if, if you're 60 years old like me, he wouldn't want your heart rate to go above 120. If you're not taking any medications, if you're not in an overtrained state, if you're 100% healthy and you feel great, he would want you to use 180 minus your age. 
But he does say if you're tired, if you're sick, if you're taking any type of uh, prescription medications, maybe you've been overtraining for a while, he would want you to use 170 minus your age for your long years of your cardio. That will put me at 60 years old at 110. I personally, just from doing this for decades, I don't even think you have to go that high. I think you'll get tremendous benefits even doing 160 minus your age. And that's what I like to do. Most of my long, easy cardio, I'm walking at a you know brisk pace, but relatively comfortable, like my heart rate doesn't go above 100. And I may get some like up and down some hills a little bit. So I think for the long, easy cardio, this is base building. It's somewhat different than that hit training like I talked about. You're, you're not in those type two fibers, which gets a little bit anaerobic threshold. You're truly in your aerobic state where you're burning fat, you're using oxygen, you're really building endurance in those slow twitch muscle fibers. Your heart loves this. It's so healthy for your heart, good for your brain, the endorphins. It's really incredible. So you wanna walk, bike, whatever you like doing. If you can, I recommend if you can go outside for you know 45 minutes or longer, even 30 minutes is great, but 45 minutes or longer. And he has an interesting concept of how you build your aerobic base. And this is how Phil Maffetone would like you to do it, and I like it too. Let's say you have 45 minutes, right? What you wanna do is cover as much ground as possible within that 45 minutes without letting your heart go above the 100 beats if you're using 160 minus your age. So, so for example, I'm gonna make this up a little bit. Let's say I can walk three miles in 45 minutes, okay? And my heart does not go above 100 beats per minute. And then what I wanna do is try to keep on covering more ground. So that means I'd be walking faster. Let's say I'm walking three and a half miles an hour. I wanna keep on covering more ground, but still not let my heart go above 100. So I know that I'm improving my aerobic base. And that's the key. And he's taken these world-class like endurance athletes and transformed them by doing this base building. He recommends like, you know, athletes do this at least for three months within this, within their like training season. I've always wanted my kids to do it. My son's an incredible collegiate runner. He won his race yesterday. He was in the 1000 indoor race, a 1000. He, you know, he, he, he they say it was a photo finish. He beat, the, he beat this kid. He said, he's, he, it's funny, he, he started out, out in position number two, right out of like, I think maybe like 10 kids. And he said he didn't get a good start. He was last. And he, he indoors like a smaller track. A thousand meters is, is a little bit more than a half a mile if you're not familiar with, familiar with meters. He's like a mid distance runner. And he actually ran each lap faster and faster. And then he caught the lead kid in the last 100 meters and just, just barely like nosed him out like a horse race. Really incredible. And this is the first um, race for indoor track. My son does all three. Cross country, this is how track works if you're not familiar with track. Cross country is like outdoors. Which is in the spring? Which is in the uh, you know the spring? No, that would mean the fall. Then indoor goes um, indoor track, and then you know, track and field is like outdoor in the spring. So this was I'm really excited for me. Did really well. I'm gonna go visit him in, in a couple of weeks and maybe go to go to one of the meets. I think there's a big meet in Boston. The fastest track in the world is actually in Boston. He'll be running there, and I love this workout. I mean, what I like about this workout is. It's so important to have a strong aerobic base. It's just like, like I said, it's like meditating when you're moving. You can't do it too often. I'd love everyone to do it five days a week, if not longer. I probably wouldn't necessarily do it on the days when you're doing your hit training because you don't want it's only you only have so much time. I just love this long easy. I mean, you can do 30 minutes in the morning, 30 minutes in the evening, like I always do. I like to do 45, 45, get about 90 minutes of it. But this this is incredible, and it's also going to help you with everything else. It'll even help you with your high intensity training for sure because you're really working those slow twitch fibers and you're also making yourself like a fat burner. Okay, so let, and then, then I also want to talk about a little bit about this zone two because it's so popular now. See zone two, let's see. How do you know if your heart rate goes above 100? I know, see, it's interesting James. I am so, um, for so many, so many, and I once again, I guess I, I just been doing this for so long. For so many years, especially especially when they became popular, I used to wear those like polar heart rate monitors. I must have worn it for a decade, 
you know, 20 years ago. I, I can just instinctively feel. I know how like 95, 100 feels for me. I just can know it. Every now and then I may take my pulse. Or you can do it for six seconds. You know, you go zero, you count your heart rate. If you get 10 beats in six, in six seconds, that's 100 beats per minute. So I just, I'm really instinctive and I can kind of know. But in the beginning, you guys, you might have to take your heart rate. You know, just do it for six seconds. So you go zero, but do a zero, don't do one. Zero and then count it for six seconds, look at your watch and then see where you're at. If you want to wear a heart rate monitor now with those Apple watches, all those type of things, when it comes to those Fitbits, they're probably better at determining heart rate than they are for calculating energy expenditure. You know, when it comes to calculating calories, they're so inaccurate. I heard they can be up to like 90, 98% inaccurate, it's like crazy. But when it comes to measuring heart rate, they do a reasonably good job. The heart rate monitors work incredibly well. I never like the feel of, of those chest monitors though. I kind of, I feel like it kind of restricts me. But unfortunately, yeah, Jeff, I don't know why I keep on saying James, Jeff, I don't know what's on my brain today. Maybe it's early. Jeff, um, unfortunately, you do have to take your heart rate. But once you've done it a few times, you'll know how a hundred feels and you'll know when you when you kind of creep up above it. But it's probably a good thing to do. You know, take your heart rate pretty regularly just for a few weeks just to get a feel. Just how I always tell everyone, it's good to count calories, track your macros, and just for like a few weeks with like my fitness pal, just so you know the rest of your life how these you know how these meals look calorie wise. Okay. But let's talk about more um um let's get the water I have VO two max there. Where's my zone two card? There we go. Did I miss that? Let me see. Where's my zone two? You know, I think I can do I think I can click it. There's my zone two. Okay. So that now this is the third option for um for people to kind of know it's kind of popular zone two the only thing that concerns me a little bit about zone two training and i got this term from mark sesson mark sesson is the guy who wrote all those books like the primal Bl blueprint mark's daily apple he also took a company uh, you know he was the guy who made he's known for this like avocado mayonnaise like instead of using mayonnaise he made his own mayonnaise out of avocado and he just sold the company for a lot of money. But I love his supplements. I think he's a really a good, good, smart guy. And I'm on the same page with him with a lot of things. He even wrote a book, The Two Meal a Day Diet, you know, which I talk about consistently. He coined the phrase, phrase chronic cardio. And that's what I'm talking about with the AFib. Like when you're working too hard for extended periods of time, it's really not good for you. And actually wears you down and breaks you down. And in my opinion, zone two, depending upon how hard you do it, can kind of slip into chronic cardio. This is more like that steady state training, like 220 minus your age. But if you keep it on the low end, like 70, 75% of your max, I think you'll be okay. It's kind of fits in between that HIIT training and that long easy training, which I think it's okay, but be a little careful with it. Like if you're doing this like steady state cardio, and then like, like Jeffy, you do take your heart rate, and you're like, you're my age, you're 60 years old, and you're at like 150 the whole time, it's too high. And I have to say, just from working with people for 30, 35 years, and just from going to gyms, like half my life in managing gyms, most people, when they get on the treadmill, the bike, the elliptical, take these classes, they are way, way too high, their heart rate. It's interesting, like we used to, you know, when spinning became popular really in the late 80s, 90s, when it first started, People would, I mean, so many classes I've been in and just people would fall off the back, you know, like pass out after, after it. you know, like, our, our, you know, I don't want to say the name, but there's one of those like high intensity places right near my gym. I had this couple of clients come to me recently, maybe, you know, maybe like a year ago and they said and they were working out there and the guy said to me, you know, like I had to stop because the ambulance would show up on a regular basis because people were constantly passing out. It happens to more men than women because maybe maybe guys that like overdo it. It's not good to keep your heart rate near maximum, like really, really high and maintain it for like 50, 60 minutes consistently. It's just not good. And I find that when people try to do zone two training, they just do it too high and too hard. But if you're really doing it and you're like 65, 70%, maybe no more than 75% of your max rate, it's very similar to the Phil Maffetone formula of 180 or 170 minus of eight. So just keep that in mind. But but it is a, um, it, it's, it's, it's not bad as long as you don't overdo it. 
Who we got here? Hey, Mike. Hey, how you doing? You say heart rate should be under 100 for 60 years old. What about if you're 30? Well, then it would be 160 minus 30. That would put you at um, 130 beats per minute. You know, if you're 30 years old. So stay around 130. You can even go a little bit higher. Like true and fill mafetone. If you're only 30 and you're not taking any medication and like you're super healthy, you that easy long aerobics can fit in a little bit more into this film Aphetone formula, his traditional formula of like 170 or so minus your age. So I would say 130, 135 and limit it to that. But I still think you will get benefit also just doing these long, easy walks and just forgetting about your heart rate, even if your heart rate is only beating 100 beats per minute. Okay, okay so let's go over. I just wanna talk a little bit more. It's gonna be on a little bit on the shorter side today, guys, with this live stream. And I'm not sure, we didn't, we've only had maybe nine, 10 people in the room, so I'm not sure if these are topics people want me to talk about, but we'll see. Maybe just 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 because it was early this morning and less people showed up. Okay, let's see. Okay, let's talk about it. like th there really is so much research out there, and I'm, I'm reading more and more about it like every single week. How important it is to have a high VO2 max, a maximum consumption when it comes to longevity, like lowering your risk of like premature, premature death. It seems that when you look at the population, the people with a higher VO2 max, or I think I have an M there by mistake, have a reduced risk of having stroke, heart disease, diabetes, cancer. It's so true. Now, you can look at it and say, okay, the people who take better care of themselves who are exercising and doing aerobic condition also eat better, like don't smoke, don't drink as much, things like that, which could be a factor to it. But once again, I was listening to one of my favorite guys, Peter Atia. You know that Harvard doctor. He's 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 he specializes in longevity. He has that podcast called called The Drive. He was saying like before you almost do anything, before you start focusing on your on your diet, you know, and and lifestyle modifications. He thinks that one of the biggest things you can do to increase your longevity is to increase your VO2 max. First, get your workouts and everything in line and in order. Like I said before, not only are you delivering oxygen to better to your body, like nitric oxide, better blood flow, you're increasing mitochondria the density. Mitochondria is like the powerhouse of the cells. It helps the body like make ATP. Your body becomes so much more efficient. Like I say, you're turning yourself into, you know, you're converting yourself from like a small four cylinder like economy car into like a race car, into like a, an Indy 500 car by increasing your VO2 max. And besides just having energy to run up a flight of stairs if you have to, or like run away from someone if they're chasing you, you're just making your body so much more efficient. Everything's gonna work better, better blood flow to your brain. So many incredible benefits of having a high VO2 max. But I really wanna reference that you don't have to kill yourself to increase your VO2 max. You can do this like short, easy workout, 15 minutes, once or twice a week, and dramatically increase your VO2 max. So there we go. I know it's a little bit short to live stream today because I have to take this um take this long drive with my daughter. But let's do but let's do a QA if you want to talk about it. I didn't even pull in any slides on my meals, but I could actually pull a couple in. I'm, I'm trying to think how I let me look at some of the meals that I that I actually ate this week if you're interested in them. I think I made a whole new list now of these like photos with some meals that I ate. Do I have any new meals in here? Let me see. You know, I'm not even sure if I do. All right. But in general, any questions for anyone before I run today? I know it's a little bit short today. It doesn't have to be about cardio training. It could be about, you know, fat burning, intermittent fasting. Is any, it's interesting. I just released a... Um, a short video on TikTok talking about my go-to two meal a day diet, you know, two meals a day plus a protein shake. I instantly hit like 50,000 views in about 12 hours, which is really good. And just, and just, and I, and I just talked about if you just give yourself a 16 um, hour fast, you do that early time restricted eating, like you break your fast at 10 o'clock with two meals. And then you add a protein shake and make sure your last meal, meal, last meals before six o'clock. You're going to be in a calorie deficit, and you're going to lose some weight and be super healthy. It did really good. I mean, that's I, that's definitely my favorite long-term strategy. I mean, I, I actually love it. Okay, let's see. We got a question here. Okay, I do two-hour walks a day. Ooh, I love that. 
and my heart rate is usually around 95 to 105. Is that enough exercise? I absolutely love it, and I think it's great. I mean, if you wanted, if you wanted to do like a little bit, that's totally like that base building. Great, you know, for you know, just for mental health and all that. What I probably would add, if you could, if you can do like one day of just interval type training where you are spiking your heart rate to maybe 90% effort, just just a few 30 second intervals, I think that would do you a lot of good to increase your VO2 max. You're definitely getting some VO2 max increases. You really got the base building down. But I probably once or twice a week would spike your heart rate to a higher level. And then also, if you can do if you can do what James does and just do a little bit of resistance training, that would be a great thing too. Or you can do like for example, if you're walking two hours at that 95 to 105, you could just do things like you know like jumping jacks, you know like a jumping jack movement. You know it's interesting because Jack Lalane, you know one of my heroes, invented the jumping jack. You can literally and you can do things like that. Like you can stop you know, every 10, 15 minutes within this two hour walk and just bang out like 25 jumping jacks. That's gonna spike your heart rate. It may even spike you up to 80, 90% and keep walking. So that would be an alternate thing for you too, James. Like I know I love the pushups too, but if you wanna just do something a little bit more aerobic-ish that involves like all the big muscle groups in your body, you see, that's what really gets the heart rate up that's a little bit more aerobic issues if you're using every single muscle in your body as opposed to the push-ups is really like anaerobic it's like you know ch chest shoulders and you know planking type motion you know that's another great thing to do like um you know it's not like you're walking with a jump rope but i love jumping rope for those little intervals too you know it's hard to walk and like hold a jump up and stop and jump rope but you can do i don't like burpees and this and that because i think it's a little rough for most people on their knees and lower back but i love jumping jacks or literally just you know you know, high stepping like knee ups, you know, like kind of like jogging in place type of a thing is another great way within a long, easy walk just to spike your heart rate a little bit. You just want to get about 80, 90% of your heart rate for 30 seconds, five, six times, a couple times a week. I think that will give you a lot of benefit. Besides, you know, you have that base building down for sure. Okay, this is Jeff. But weight loss has been very slow lately. Even though I know I'm in a calorie deficit, maybe doing hit workers could jump start. No, I think it could. It could help a little bit. I'm assuming. I I, I know Jeff. I think um, I know you're eating enough protein, right? And sometimes, it, sometimes even when you're counting calories, um, you know, sometimes it's really hard to determine how many calories are really in the foods. You know, if you're using My Fitness Pal, I think it's a great app, Chronometer. But you know, it it takes time. You got to be really diligent with it. Maybe you're really eating a little bit more than you think. You know, but make sure you're, you're eating enough protein. I think you are, but make sure you're doing that. But I think a little bit of, like if you just add just one or two HIIT workouts to the to the um, tennis, I think that could really help. Plus, like you said, you, I think you're just starting up in tennis season again now. So maybe the fact that you weren't playing tennis could have a factor a little bit too. Okay. Okay, here, oh, this is a good, thank you, Patel. Okay, Mike, can you do a video on what you eat in a day and your life? Those videos are always popular. Yes, I definitely will. I did a couple. Um, I did one maybe six months ago. If you want to look for it, I can link it below the video if you want. And I, I went, you th I, it's funny because I started recording it in the car and then I drove over to where I walk, along, I walk along the Hudson River in New York. And then I took it back to my gym and I worked out in my gym. And then I, show you, I showed you what I eat for the day. But I'd like doing that. Yeah, that, that's a, a number of things I want to start doing um, in the future for sure, like more. Because I just got my new iPhone, which I love it, that iPhone 14 Pro Max. I'm having trouble now because, that, like I said, that little short video I just posted on TikTok that got 50,000 views, it was 4K, which looks so nice, the clarity of it. But I don't have a computer now that can really edit 4K. It took me so long. So I think I'm going to buy a new computer and start doing a little more vloggy type stuff too. Hey, Gwen, thanks for showing up again. So it's better to walk slow and a longer time or sprint. Well, you want to do, Gwen, a combination of them both. Okay, When you're walking slow and long, base building is good to build your aerobic base, good for your brain, good for your mental health. It's really That's important too. But to really increase your VO2 max, 
that's like an indicator of how aerobically fit you are, like a maximal oxygen consumption, which is great for longe longevity, reducing like disease risk. You do want to do some of that as well. So you want to do a combination of both. But when you're walking short and hard, or when you're doing something short and hard, really short and hard, like I pulled up, I mean, you may have missed a slide, I pulled up a slide here. This would be the, like a hit workout. Only 15 minutes long, go really hard for 30 seconds, easy for 90 seconds, just do that maybe five or six times. And also, you know, try that. And also, Gwen, you know, I was thinking about you, Gwen, because I know you asked a question last week about, you know, I know you said like you kind of eat really quickly. Like what you can, what you can do to slow down, and I, and I just remembered something like a few days later that I do that helps me eat a little bit slower. Is that like I used to eat? Um, I love eating eating nuts, not peanuts. I eat, I love walnuts and pecans and and Brazil nuts, and I used to just buy like bags of those nuts. But what I did, what I've done in the last couple of years, I only buy shelled nuts. And why I do that. It's because it slows me down. It makes me eat the nuts so much slower because I gotta crack them open. Walnuts. It takes time. So that's something you might want to try too. That before you start eating a meal, maybe you want to take a couple of nuts in the shell. You know, slowly break them open. It may it may kind of like pace your eating pattern. But I'm not sure. I, I just I just thought of that. I was hoping you show up today so, that, so I can mention that to you. Okay. But yes, you want to do both long, easy. And short, hard, long, easy, as often as you can. You can do it every single day because you're not going to be sore. You're not going to, you can do it every day. But the short, the short, hard, you know, maybe once or twice a week and you want to spread it out. Obviously, you don't want to do it every single day. So we've been going 46 minutes. I planned on going an hour today. So if anyone has any other questions, then I'm going to quickly take a walk. Then I'm going to pack the car up and drive my daughter back to, um, back to school, but it's gonna be fun. I get to talk to her uh, for like five, six hours, which is gonna be a lot of fun. And I, I felt, you know, my son left last week, so I miss him. Now both kids are gone. We're gonna be empty nesters once again. But then I'll, then I'll spend some time. I'm, I'm gonna definitely start putting out a lot more videos. I'm gonna start going live on, um, on Amazon a lot, you know, doing my Amazon influencer stuff. I mean, I have my own like little QVC, like shopping network type show where I talk about all the different things that I use in my house, uh, you know, that all the products I recommend. Like for example, I love this um, this espresso. I have an espresso machine from the, from the espresso. I talk about that. If, if you're interested in that, I'm gonna, I'll start sharing some links with you guys if you wanna follow me on um, on Amazon, you know, which is kind of fun. I think we got another question from Jeff here, you know. Okay, I'm trying, okay, yeah, this, is, this is Jeff, okay. I'm trying to think of a question, but my brain doesn't work too good. <laughs> Well, in the morning, you know, me too. I feel like I'm a little bit off too. I feel like I'm saying like, you know, uh, you know, uh, like a little bit more than I normally normally do. But what do you guys? What do, does everyone like this early time, like 9:30, or do we like the lighter times better? And can Friday, like, I'm thinking about because I know I really want to watch my son run because this is the last season when he's gonna be running in college. He's a senior. I know he has a lot of meets on Saturdays or Sundays, and I might be going like the Boston and different parts. So I'm thinking about maybe switching this because I'm not going to miss anymore. I really want to do this at least once a week, maybe late Friday afternoon, maybe early evening. I think Jeff said maybe five or six might work for him. Let me know if like a Friday afternoon, late afternoon, early evening can possibly work for everyone. It'll be a little late late in the UK, but California, US, it'll, it'll really work unless people go out Friday nights. I can even pick a day during the week and just do it. And I'm also, I have to say, not that many people showed up this morning for this cardio thing. Maybe people are still more interested with me when it comes to intermittent fasting and weight loss and um, you know, and, and, and meal examples, things like that. So let me know too, also topic-wise. And I definitely will do more videos on, on, on like what I eat in a day and how I work out and all that. Okay, later is better for Jeff. Um, I can still... I can still be mornings, Friday evenings is fine too. Okay, good, that's good. I'm glad. Okay, so any other questions, guys? Is and anyone watching this on Facebook or everyone everyone here on YouTube? Because I once again I put that thing I I think I did it right today. What happened last week, which I was a little disappointed because we had a lot of people show up last week, is I'm using this software and I made a mistake. So uh, I I didn't it didn't go out properly. Like I'm broadcasting this on. Facebook in the time restricted eating group and the intermittent fasting group 
in, you know, the time restricted eating fasting group in um, my Mike Cola fitness page. I think on LinkedIn, Twitter. I like I put it out everywhere. So I think everyone here is watching it on YouTube, which is my favorite platform. And also, I don't know if anyone's interested. You know, I'm think I'm I think I'm, I'm redoing my website. I'm gonna run some specials if anyone's interested in like one on one, like online, like doing a one on one session with me. I normally charge a lot for it, but I'm, I think I'm gonna run a bunch of discounts for. Um, for January on my intermittent fasting course also as well, which I'm actually um, revamping. I'm making it even better, which should be fun. Let's see what Jeff says. <clears throat> Sometimes it may not be that the people aren't interested, but it just doesn't show up the, in their feed because of YouTube. Yeah, no, that could be true. That could be true, Jeff. <clears throat> uh, hey, Mike, how are you doing? Came here after a few, oh, thanks, I appreciate it. I love that car, it looked like a Mustang to me. I, a buddy of mine's got like, a, you know, one of those like '69 Mustangs. It's like I love it. He's got it in white. It's a beautiful car. I love those cars. That's like his prized possession. You know, only takes it out like on a beautiful sunny day in the summertime. You know, I appreciate you showing up. That's great. Okay, Harry. Oh, there we go. We got a Facebook. A Harry's on fa Facebook. That's good. All right. So I guess it, I guess it is working. I guess it is working today. All right, guys, I just don't want to ramble on. I always like to get on, give you specific content, you know, with the slides. That's another thing. You know, I, I, let me see if I can do this. When I pull a slide up like this, and I make it really big, I think there's a way where I can make, I just haven't figured it out with the software. Where I can be, see, see, see how I can make myself smaller like that? Let me know if you if you prefer this. When it comes to me pulling up my slides, I never like this. I know a lot of presenters do this, you know, so they can see the information. Let me know, do you prefer something like this so you can really see the slides with me smaller? Or do you like how I normally do it with um with these slides like almost hitting me <laughs> almost hitting me in the head? You know. It's, it's, I kind of like this better, but if you prefer the other one, like if you really want it, because I know one time Chris was here and he was saying, Mike, where are the slides? I can't see the slides. I can go either way. So also, if anyone has a second, let me know what you prefer. Like, do you prefer it like this or would you rather me? Okay, so Jeff says bigger. So Jeff said bigger is better. Okay, so you, so you guys would prefer that when I'm pulling up a slide, you guys would prefer if I do something like this so you can really, really see it. And I, then I'll be kind of small on the side.
Okay, now I think I got it. Is that back? Okay, I think we're back now. Sometimes the software could be a little confusing for me. Like I said, I use that restream. This is eCam. I think your microphone got disconnected and I can see you're just moving your mouth, but no sound. So let's hope. I think I fixed it because I think what I think I did is is while I was oh, so I'm better good. I th I think I did is that when I was ch messing around with the different screens, I must have shut the um, I must have I must have muted the microphone. You know, I, these live streams something's always something's always going. On. I appreciate everyone hanging in there. Hey, we didn't we didn't even lose anyone with the uh, with the no sound. You know, which is kind of funny. You know, it's interesting when I record these videos. Oh my God! I used to record like I used to batch record videos, meaning that like one day I would record like five videos. It would take me five six hours, and then I would say, Oh my! And then I would have like no sound because I messed up the sound. And oh my God! A whole day's work. So now whenever I rec record a video for like YouTube, I only like to film like one at a time because so many things, so many things go wrong. All right, guys. So I appreciate everyone hanging in there. I know we started early this morning. Any other questions before I go? Cause I want to quickly get a 45 minute walk in and I got to pack the car and drive my, my daughter back to school. So any other questions before I go? All right. Thanks guys. I appreciate you showing up and I hope to see everyone next week. Either we're going to, I may try a Friday afternoon. We'll see, or, you know, Friday early evening or we'll do a normal Sunday morning. We'll see how it goes. I have to see if my son has a, uh, a track meeting on. Okay. Take care. And I appreciate everyone showing up. And once again, you know, any, um, you know, Share, share my, my, you know, the, my videos with any of your friends and spread the word for me if you possibly can. I'm definitely looking to grow, um, to grow the channel and definitely leave, leave, leave ideas for me to make media videos of the type of videos you guys and gals want. Okay? Sounds good. Yeah, Friday evening w would be better. Oh, that sounds good. I, I like Friday evenings a lot. I like that. Yeah, Friday evenings would be better. I'm, I'm going to try that. All right. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks for showing up, guys. Take care. Have a great have a great day. Get outside. Take a walk today too. I mean, if you can, get outside. Enjoy the. Uh, it's a beautiful sunny day in New York. So enjoy the weather. Get outside. Take care.